Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We know that EA make mistakes inside of FIFA pretty regularly, but I have never seen more mistakes than we currently have witnessed in the past couple of days in FIFA 23 Ultimate Team. It is outrageous. The number of mistakes we have had from small ones to big ones. We've got the wrong cards being in packs. People were packing gold Phil Foden yesterday out of their preseason packs that were finally released and given out from those objectives that we completed in FIFA 22. But now they're paused because of a mistake. We have the wrong dynamic images on some of our cards that were released for content yesterday. We've got the Napoli badge showing in game when EA doesn't even have the rights for Napoli. It's all going crazy. On top of that, we still have the hero situation. We still have that Holland's transfer SBC. There's still so many things that are going wrong with this game. And what I want to do today is talk about that a little bit and just kind of shed some light on that whole situation because it's kind of getting annoying that we have all of these mistakes every single day and have to wait on all these different compensations. It's also getting confusing trying to keep track of all those and knowing what in the world's going on with this game. But... Also, there's a lot that was happening on the market, and I really want to deep dive into a lot of road to the knockout prices. I almost said road to the final, uh, because we had a ton of prices moving yesterday with road to the knockouts live with games being played for Champions League. It's going to happen again today. And of course, we had a massive UEFA marquee matchups SBC, which is one of the errors from yesterday with this part of the SBC right here. But some really big packs, a Prime Electrum Players Pack and a Premium Gold Players Pack as the entire group reward dropped a lot of the market yesterday. And of course, we've got a lot of leaks to talk about. So buckle in. It's going to be a long video. It's going to be a lot to cover. But if you're excited for the video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Let's start by talking about these mistakes because it's it's just crazy. As we just looked at inside of the UEFA marquee matchups, that was one of the first mistakes that I saw yesterday. I tweeted about it right away. They actually had the Napoli badge, right? Which the Napoli badge is not supposed to be in FIFA because EA do not have the rights to it. Again, everything is called Napoli FC. And if you look at a guy like Irving Lozano's card in the market, it shows some sort of like made up badge that is not the Napoli badge. It's the same thing as Piemonte Calcio last year, but EA accidentally, I guess you could say, put the actual Napoli badge, right? That's what it should have looked like on the SBC today. They actually put the real one in the game. So I don't know what kind of, you know, like lawsuit or legal trouble they're going to be in for that. But that's a pretty big oopsie from them. But here's the ones that really hit hard and really are big mistakes. Here's the biggest one right here. So yesterday we were finally receiving the Foot 22 preseason reward packs, which we grinded objectives in August and in September of FIFA 22 to get these packs. And the packs were actually really good. Like my packs were not bugged. It was like hit or miss. Some of you guys' packs might have been bugged, but the packs were actually really, really solid. And I got some pretty good cards from them. I packed Lucas Paqueta, right? I was happy with it. Um, the Foot 22 preseason rewards were incorrectly containing gold versions of players items they were like people were packing gold Phil Foden or like gold Bremer instead of the road to the knockout version that they were should have been packing of course since these cards are in packs so EA noticed this about an hour after the drop and they said hey um, we are going to be disabling the rollout of these packs. So if you did not log on to FIFA within the first hour of content yesterday and you didn't get your preseason reward packs, don't be alarmed because they are going to be released out again. EA paused the rollout on those. And they also said, and this is where I'm a little bit upset with this, they said impacted players will be sent a corrected pack in-game in the coming days. For the people that packed gold Phil Foden, they don't want a new pack. They want the Phil Foden that they deserve. So I don't know if EA is going to say that they're going to change some things uh, or that they're going to actually like, you know, if you packed a card that was supposed to have a special card in packs, they're going to give you that card back. That's what they should be doing um, because, yeah, like they gave out the packs they were supposed to. They just contained the wrong items in them. So I don't like that response from EA. As you can see, there's a lot of, um, you know, pretty upset replies below a lot of these tweets and everything that people are talking about in terms of all these EA mistakes. Um, but yeah, I'm really curious to see how EA do compensation for that sort of thing that happened yesterday. Uh, but that was probably the biggest one, those preseason packs. And then of course, it was hard to see right away because they fixed it now or it's hard to see now. But inside of the Dynamic Duo SBC that we had yesterday for Harrison and Rodrigo, when they first were dropped, it actually showed the Harrison card down here with the Rodrigo dynamic image on the Harrison card and then vice versa, Harrison on the Rodrigo card. So that was very confusing. 
um, GG's to EA Sports. But yesterday, yesterday, like all the mistakes just kind of came to a peak, right? And EA even tweeted about another one um, about some sort of like friendly issue. The homegrown 11 live foot friendly squad um, requirements have been updated in game to no longer accept loan items. And this tweet right here sums it all up. You will be tweeting a lot today. Like this EA FIFA Direct account has had so many tweets recently and people are anticipating so many tweets. Like, look, everybody's just having fun, like kind of <laughs> responding to this because it's just ridiculous, right? And it's getting to the point where it's sad. Um, I almost halfway feel bad for them because they keep making all these mistakes. They're never going to be able to come back from this. They're like just digging a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. But the biggest part about this all to me is it's just flat out annoying, man. It's just flat out annoying that we can't log on to the game and have things work correctly. And I think that's my biggest issue with this. And I hope they figure it out. Whatever the problem is, whatever's going on, you know, we're, we're used to seeing mistakes here or there. But this consistently, like every single day, big mistakes too. Wrong cards and packs like we talked about. I don't even know what all is going to come of the mistakes that were had yesterday. So that's kind of, I don't want to spend all day talking about this because, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to be negative all day because there was a lot of cool things that happened on the game yesterday too. Again, the marquee matchups content was solid. It's just annoying when every single day you log on the game, there's mistakes. And especially when you're affected by some of those mistakes, like packing gold cards when you're supposed to be packing the promo items, it's frustrating. So yeah, there's just so many compensations that we're waiting on still as well. Of course, they haven't even mentioned or talked about the hero pack, what they're going to be doing with that. Of course, we're still waiting to figure out to see what they are going to do um, with the Holland transfer SBC. They're going to be compensating us for that as well, right? We're, <laughs> there's just so many things that we don't know at the moment. And EA is probably going to tweet about more stuff they messed up that maybe we don't even know about. So yeah, that's kind of the update there, of course. Um, just stay tuned at EA FIFA Direct account. We're going to have a lot more conversations about how that compensation still can impact the market because there's a lot of tradable packs that are probably going to be given out as well um, here and there. So yeah, there's a lot more to come with that. But speaking of tradable packs, like we talked about in yesterday's video, there was going to be supply coming yesterday on the market with this UEFA marquee matchups SBC dropping and it did drop and boy oh boy did EA give out some pretty good packs. It's only 11,000 coins to do. I haven't done it yet. I need to. Really, really good value SBC. Pretty big dub. And since the packs are so good, the market yesterday really dropped off a lot and it didn't recover that well either. Now, Road to the Knockout cards definitely got packed yesterday, but a lot of them have, of course, other factors, including their games, impacting their prices. We'll talk about those in a second. But a lot of people lost coins on the market yesterday just because of the fact that those packs were giving out really good stuff, right? And there was a lot of packs for really, really cheap. Take a look at like a guy like Nkunku, your high tier meta cards. On Monday, we saw these guys drop a little bit and then bounce back. And it was a good opportunity to trade for a lot of these cards yesterday. They went from like 127K from Nkunku yesterday down to 114. And that's basically where he sits now. So many of these cards got you know, hit with supply and they just, they just really didn't bounce back. A couple of them have a little bit like 81 K for Usman. He's now 82. Wow. What a big bounce back there. You know, Militao, some of the other cards that are going to be out of packs um, or that are expected to be in team of the week. Militao went down a bit. I actually traded with him, made like a couple thousand coins, not really anything big there. Tomori is leaked to be in team of the week four today. His card dropped a bit, right? 93 K. He's like 95, 96,000 coins now. So there was a few cards yesterday that you could trade with. I think Cancelo was popping up on Snipe for like 100k and he went back up to 115. So, you know, a, a few cards, if you were able to get some lucky Snipes, have had a couple rebounds. But for a lot of the market yesterday, it was literally just down and then prices have not really rebounded yet. And I, I don't really expect them to rebound. I mean, look at Anthony from 37,000 coins to 29k. I mean, especially with the compensations that we have looming, uh, the tradable pack supply that could be out there, and the fact that today is a Wednesday, and what do we usually see on Wednesdays? The market kind of tails off on Wednesdays normally. I'm really glad that we talked about selling some cards from teams earlier on this week because I think, honestly, Monday Monday morning was like the best time to sell cards. Like when the market kind of rose up nice here, Conte was like one, 170 highs. You know, Conte was 170 highs yesterday, started to drop off, right? You know, and then with the big pack supply down even lower now, that's not even a really good example of a card that's dropped off a lot because more of the lower tier cards 
have dropped off even more. But it just felt like that Monday time frame was the best time to sell. And I'm glad we talked about selling then because prices have just continued to nosedive, especially on anything in packs since then. So that's what I would expect for the market throughout the rest of the day. Honestly, um, today on Wednesday too, I'm, I just feels like with the way that the game is right now, we have really good upgrade packs that are out. We have really good content. People's coins are being drained from those 80 plus upgrade packs. Although those do go away today, um, people's coins are being drained from the good content in terms of SBCs and stuff like that. So that's pulling coins off of the market. And of course, you have a lot of the supply coming in. Last thing I would say about this Erling Holland card, uh, I would be selling the gold for sure. And I think you're going to see his price drop a bit this morning because on Wednesday today, Erling Holland's gold card is back in packs for the first time since what was it like September 30th <laughs> since this guy's been out of packs for almost like two weeks straight it's crazy week and a half he's been out so he's coming back into packs I think you're gonna see his card price drop off since he has inflated a decent amount I don't think he's gonna go to like 150k or anything crazy like that he's still super overpowered super meta and popular in real life and just all the hype with Holland right now is crazy um, but his inform I think is around 650k or somewhere in there. Yeah, 650 at the moment. So I think his gold card should probably drop off a little bit. I'm thinking like around 300, maybe 310, 320 is where he could go today. But there's definitely going to be some panic selling there. And if we get any sort of tradable supply today on Wednesday, he's definitely going to go down some more. So, of course, keep an eye on your cards uh, like Cancelo, like Tamori. As I said, as of right now, I believe these are the only two guys that we know of when I'm recording this video that are leaked in to be in the team of the week. And you say like some people were saying from Pong News, what about him Him in there, you know? So these are confirmed cards in team of the week. We're going to have some more leaks and some more information about that today for sure. But if you have a card, especially with the way that the market is, like if you even have this gold Cancelo, like maybe you bought him before, maybe it was on the weekend, right? He started to go up. He was 115K. You know, yesterday, like we said, he was 116, dipped down into 100s, is now rising again. Seriously, man, I would consider selling in the hype. We do have a pretty big promo coming this weekend on Friday called Rule Breakers. You guys remember Rule Breakers? It's a really fun promo. It gives some really interesting boosts to cards in terms of pace. And we'll talk more about that later on in the week because, you know, it's still Wednesday. We have some time before then. But, I mean, with the way that the market is right now, I'm taking safe profits on any card that I can. And I mean, I'll be honest, a lot of people lost coins yesterday. I'm in that group, right? Let's talk about some road to the knockouts because I don't know if any of the games yesterday really went like as expected for most what most people thought. Of course, it's football, right? Football and, and those games and Champions League specifically can go any which way. A bombing was like the only card yesterday from a road to the knockout sense that had a really big rise because of the way his team performed and he performed. Chelsea winning 2-0. Aubameyang's card went from 500k all the way to 570. He's back down to 520,000 coins. The biggest losers on the day, and again, we I ju we just have to say this, and we've said this since the beginning, it, it just has to be known whenever you're trying to trade, whenever you're trying to make coins, buying and selling, whether it's for your team even, buying and selling these live cards is risky at any time single time even this bremer card right juve are, are basically like eliminated from getting any upgrades and from moving on in the champions league with the results of them losing yesterday and everything else that happened in the group um like this bremer card is basically considered no longer live right because it's like impossible that he would get an upgrade they'd have to win their next two games for him to maybe get an upgrade and even then i don't believe he can they can get out of the group so you know this card is basically like we just said not live anymore. Now, on the other side of the coin, um, you have cards that are absolutely still live, which is kind of crazy. I actually have two Phil Foden's, and this is a very popular place where people are trying to make coins, I think. And, you know, also a place where people have lost coins, like myself included. I have two Phil Foden's on my transfer list. I think that 330K for this card is too low. He was 100,000 coins more than this yesterday before the City game. But of course, you guys know the end result. City end up, ended up drawing that game. And he, of course, uh, dropped down a lot in price. Combination of all the supply and um, you know them not winning that game, which would progress them towards that uh, two out of three win upgrade. So now you need City to win both of their next two Champions League games for him to get a plus one. But he has already confirmed himself with the, the way that the group plays out. Phil Foden is the first card to get an upgrade, a guaranteed upgrade. He's the first card to clinch 
a qualification upgrade because Manchester City with the points and the way the table looks right now is going on to the uh, the road to the final, right? They're getting on to the knockout rounds. And you can see that on this tracker here from Criminal, uh, Foden is guaranteed to plus one as Manchester City qualified for the knockout round. So he is going to get an 89. But the bad thing about this is, as we talked about in yesterday's video, the upgrade for this is not going to be live until November 4th. Yes, you heard me correctly. November is when we have to wait to see until uh, an upgraded Phil Foden card at the latest. Of course, if City were to end up winning their next two games, he could get upgraded around that time as well to go to a 90. Um, but that's that's kind of the pain with these cards, right? But here's why I think the Phil Foden card is maybe still undervalued and actually is still undervalued. Manchester City hype, right? This Phil Foden card is a pretty meta item in the game. Explosive. He's got really good position changes. He can go to center attacking mid and center forward. He's down 100K from where he was. You can see, right? He was 423. Now he's down to 329, right? And his card just is at this very, very low price. So this is a card, in my opinion, where he is going to at least get an upgrade. Road to the knockouts have performed really, really well out of packs literally every single year, especially for these guys that are from top clubs that are going to succeed in the competition. So if this is a card that you want for your team, could it go a little bit lower this week? I mean, it absolutely could, right? Wow, 315, that's crazy, man. This, there's some late night snipes on these guys. Could could this card go a little bit lower? It absolutely could, right? If there's some crazy panic, some more cards that get released, compensation packs, yeah, that card could go a little bit lower. And you know what? I'm gonna have to bite the bullet here and sell the two Fodens that I have that I'm losing about 30, 40,000 coins on after tax right now, just because of tax being 15K at where he's at right now, you know, I might have to bite the bullet on a couple of those so that I have coins to trade with, but that's how trading with these live cards go. And Foden's going to go out of packs. These cards are semi rare and they're live and upgrading and they look cool. So I do think that Foden in the low 300s is a buy because he will end up being more expensive than that down the road, in my opinion, um, after we get this card onto packs and stuff like that. So again, just to kind of drill in the fact that these road to the knockout cards, yes, they can be very profitable. Um, um, and they, but they can also lose you a lot of coins too. So just be very careful with these cards at any time in your team. I actually bought a Valverde tonight for 585,000 coins because he dropped off so much after the game yesterday. Right now he's 640K. I'm thinking I'm going to take the cash in this card. And I know it's not a lot of profit. It's like maybe even a 15K flip, but you know, I'm probably going to take the cash on a card like this just because um, it's it's coins that I can make. It's positive coins that I can make right now. I feel like yesterday for myself and for a lot of traders in the market, it was tough because, oh, is this card actually available to list? All right, 647. I'm going to go. Let me check his price one more time. Um, I, it's just all about the quick flips. And with a lot of the supply that we had in the market yesterday, it was very tough um, to get a quick flip flip in and out when a lot of the market was just going down. And I think that's going to continue today. I honestly do. I'm also going to be that guy and undercut by 2K and hopefully make a couple thousand coins in that car just to kind of work up and, and make up some of the losses that we had. But here's what I'll say. Just like we saw a bombing go up in price yesterday for a good performance, keep an eye on the guys that play today that are in the road to the knockouts team. You know, guys like Thomas Muller at 50K, I, I like his card, I do, but I think so many people are investing in Thomas Muller. If anything goes wrong, it's going to go bad. Konate, watch his card today. Lamar, keep an eye on his card for sure. Um, Rafinha, absolutely. And then as of course, we go into tomorrow on Thursday, keep an eye on some of your Europa League and Conference League cards. So just, just watch these guys, right? The thing that it made Aubameyang's card go up, and the, the reason why he rose so much yesterday is because Chelsea was in a spot in the group where they needed a win. And people weren't expecting a bombing to get upgraded, right? So they got a win and boom, they're looking better for upgrade potential and to get out of the group. That means this card value goes up. Basically the opposite with Foden, people were expecting City to win. They didn't, they drew. So that expectation kind of the, the other way, right? His price goes down because that expectation is lost on a little bit and the likelihood of his upgrade just got a little bit harder. So that's kind of the thing to keep in mind with the guys that may be playing today. Again, you think about a Rafinha where Barcelona are in their group. They need a win. They need a win. So watch on these cards. 
I'd also say this is a bit cheeky, but watch the ones to watch cards. You saw um, Chow Many rise up a lot before Real Madrid's game, even though they didn't win yesterday. Chow Many went from 78K to 90,000 coins before the game. So guys that play today as well, or even tomorrow on Thursday, keep an eye on like Mane, Lewandowski, Jesus, uh, Nunez, you know, keep an eye on those cards. I'm not saying they are going to go up. I'm just saying that they could potentially start to rise, even though they don't get upgraded for Champions League games. And it doesn't make sense that these cards go up and their wins for these Champions League games don't count for the wins to watch upgrade. Their cards somehow just kind of seem to go up in value. And I will take some coins there on a Valverde that it's nice to actually have some coins back in the bank and be able to flip some other stuff because right now I'm down on those Phil Foden's. So I'm going to hold on those Phil Foden's today and see if he can go any little bit higher as people realize that technically he has clinched an upgrade. So that's nice, but we'll just have to see where that goes. Now, let's talk a little bit about today on Wednesday, right? We talked about Champions League market movements and stuff like that. We do have the, the two team of the week leaks. It should be a pretty decent team of the week this week. If EA put a couple cards in there. It'd be very, very nice to have a solid team of the week. Now, a couple um, pieces of leaked content. And, you know, I think there is one piece of content that we're absolutely getting today. And I'll talk about that in a second. But Savio is added to come via Road to Knockouts SBC. This is actually a really interesting one. In last night's video, we talked about Odegaard being the only SBC or the only player that could upgrade on what EA says is the upgrade day, the first upgrade day, October 21st. Technically, if PSV win their next two games, one of which is against Arsenal on the 20th of October, this Savio card could also um, be an upgraded card if they beat um, Arsenal. So that's just kind of here nor there, but that's out there. I think this card basically, it kind of has to drop either today or tomorrow, uh, but I feel like it'd be more of a today type SBC, but this guy's uh, base silver card does not look that good. So hopefully EA juice him up and make him pretty cheap. A lot of Eredivisie hype though, because Eredivisie foundation players, I think these are coming today as well. Our first foundation objectives of the year have been leaked. Windall looks pretty nice. This Gear Truda guy can actually play center back. Um, and I, maybe even Bazoa can play center back as well. And he's obviously lengthy with stats like that. So um, some of these guys look pretty good. Watch out for your air divisi links. They rose up a lot yesterday. And this content didn't drop yesterday. So it's kind of down again. Some of those air divisi cards like Dirk Coit on the market. Uh, but the official card design was added. Uh, just a few hours ago. In my opinion, I think we're getting this Eredivisie content. Uh, be both of these two things, most likely today, or maybe one of them today and one of them on Thursday. That's just kind of my opinion. So watch out for that Eredivisie stuff. Um, can you invest at all? Last year for the Foundations players, you needed like a low rated squad. You had to have golds and silvers basically of Eredivisie players um, to play in that um, objective to get that done. So that's kind of stuff that we could see here pretty soon. Now also, this is the biggest leak that we have right now. And I'm going to show you guys this and talk about it because it needs to be shown and talked about. But we'll talk about it more throughout the week. Cristiano Ronaldo is going to be in the Rule Breakers promo. Rule Breakers is leaked to be the next promo, of course. We saw EA add packs to the code. And this is a potential concept. This is not. These are predicted stats, right? The whole Rule Breakers promo, in short, is they take a stat that's really high on a card. They make it go down. And then they increase another card another stat on the card that makes that player just come kind of different, right? Breaking the rules, if you will. So like last year, they gave Holland plus 25 pace, but they knocked, I think it was like a shooting down or something. So on this card, they've lowered Ronaldo's shooting from 92 to 88, but they've given him a massive dribbling boost up to 91. Imagine though they did this with pace. Imagine like an 88 shooting Ronaldo with like 88 pace as well. That'd be pretty sick. So that's the whole premise of the Rule Breakers promo. And Ronaldo's the first card to be leaked. I know it's Wednesday. I know it's early, but... That's pretty nuts to see a leak like that already and to know that a big boy Ronaldo, you know, two promos in a row with Messi headlining this one and Ronaldo headlining the next one. EA, I see what you're doing. GG's uh, grabbing the bag. So that's that's something to kind of look forward to and expect. And, you know, hopefully we'll get some more news about the Rule Breakers promo. Slight potential, I guess you could say, of a loading screen today. Um, but other than that, it should be a normal Wednesday. So new team of the week, probably a new silver star, um, and then maybe some air divisi content. I don't know if we'll have any other surprises, but also last day to do 80 plus upgrades. And if I can just flex a slight bit, just slight flex, you guys are going to say that I'm on the red list. And if you guys saw the tweet or if you were in the stream, you know, um, but we did snag ourselves a first owner untradeable 
Neymar yesterday. Literally as a stream, I was like, hey guys, let's do an 80 plus together. And it was Brazil left wing and it didn't walk out. I didn't see Neymar walk out, but we packed an untradeable Neymar and I packed Paqueta from my uh, foot 22 um, preseason packs. So the squad has gotten a couple updates. I don't know how to fit these guys in on full chemistry, but yeah, that was pretty wild from yesterday. Uh, so we, we are sorted now. Neymar, Desai, Paqueta, the team is improving and we're really not spending that many coins on it. I was going to do I was gonna do Raheem Sterling, but now I have Neymar, so I, th I think I'm good. So absolutely crazy scenes from there as well. But it should be a very interesting Wednesday with a lot of movements on the market. It's going to be a bit difficult to trade, I think, with the market probably heading down. But with a new team of the week today and some other op, uh, potentials with road to the knockout cards, and always don't forget to, don't forget about those cards that are out of packs, right? I know I, I traded with a Saliba yesterday. Trading with these informs that are out of packs, you know, I think of guys like Son, Mohamed Salah on a lower tier. You've got like Modric, Kai Havertz. So many of these informs you can get good deals on and fluctuation trade with them as they move up and down during a normal day. There's coins to be made there as well. So if you enjoyed the video today, guys, hit the thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the Twitch stream today. Link down below in the description. It's been Nate the Foot Account. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.